We are back with episode 3 of the DCS Mission Editor series. Let's get right to it and get some support set up for our flight. Let's go ahead and add an AWACS, Tanker, and a Friendly Cat flight to assist us on our mission. This will also include making sure we set up all the radios so that it is easier to communicate between flights. Let's start with the AWACS. We'll have it airborne to start, so all we really need to do is set its route and make it orbit between waypoints 1 and 2. We can also set its radio. When setting a racetrack orbit, always remember that it will orbit from the waypoint you have selected to the next waypoint in sequence. Now we'll do something similar for our tanker. This time we also need to set the tanker's TACAN in the advanced waypoint property so that we can find it. Don't forget to also set its radio up. Now let's add a cap flight to support us on our mission as we know there will be enemy flights in the area. We could take care of this within our own flight, but as the mission grows, it will become increasingly difficult. You could also set these up as client slots. However, for this mission, we'll just have them start hot on the carrier so that there is some activity around us while we're getting started up. Make sure that their task is set to cap and set them to patrol an area just south of the front lines. Once set up, they should engage any enemy aircraft that attempt to hinder our mission. So now we have the carrier on 1275, the AWACS on 253, the tanker on 307, and the cap flight on 251. We also have TAC cans for the carrier and tanker. We should quickly check to make sure that there are no conflicts. You can find this information by clicking on Beacons Info. If everything is good, let's add all this information to the briefing so that it is easily found during the mission. Later we'll be creating a custom knee board for the mission and we'll add it to it, but for now this will work. To make life a bit easier, we can also set the preset channels in the aircraft so that we don't have to tune them manually. Let's set 1 to AWACS, 2 to tanker, 3 to carrier, and 4 to cap. Now we are going to take a look at group and static templates. I'm going to create a new mission just to demonstrate how this works. We have the option to save any mission as a template so that we can use it in the future. There are some important things to know about these templates though. Zones, initial points, draw objects, and triggers will not save with a template. Neither will briefs, weather, or mission goals. There are some other things that don't save as well, but these are the big ones. If you do want to make a template with these things, just build a mission to the point of adding client slots and save it normally. However, static templates won't work if you want any of these things to carry over. I personally mostly use static templates for air bases, carrier groups, or FARPs that I plan on using over and over. Try to think of a static template as a large scale group template tied to the map you created on. For example, let's decorate Coboletti Air Base and save it as a static template. Here, through the magic of editing, I have already done this. Let's go ahead and save it and give it a good name and description so we will remember what it is in the future. Before we head back to our other mission, let's take a look at group templates as well. Using the Create and Modify Templates button, we can bring up the Templates window on the right. Here we can select the country and the group we want to place. The minus sign next to the group will delete the group, but be warned there is no pop-up for this, so if you press the minus sign, it will delete the group. 
Below that, we can also pick the heading for the group. If we want to create a group, we can do that here as well. Prior to opening the window, select the group that you want to make a template for. Put a name in and save it. Try to use descriptive names when using group templates as you get more and more, it'll get very confusing. The nice thing about the group templates is that they are not map specific. So now we can use these group templates on any map we are working on. Let's go ahead and make a small armor group with some support units. We'll save this out with a name that is easily recognizable so when we go to use it in the future, we know what we are looking at. It doesn't matter where we make this for now as we'll be placing it with the group template tool later on. We can do this for multiple types of groups. As you can see in my list, I have templates for AAA, SAMs, armor, infantry, and many other things. Once you have created some groups and saved them, load up the mission we are working on. First, let's load the Cobaletti static template we created. As you can see, Cobaletti is now populated with the template. Now let's head over to the front line and add some more groups to make it feel like an actual battlefield. I'm also going to change the percentage chance of some of these groups to spawn so that every time the mission is flown, we'll have a different front line. This mission is starting to look a lot better and there'll be some replayability to it with the random units we have. We can also use this mission to create more missions in the future with just a few quick modifications. Don't forget to test your mission on occasion to make sure everything is still working. In the next episode, we'll add some more serious threats behind enemy lines and learn how to create custom kneeboards for missions. If you made it this far, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching.